welcome to the Giggles and Goals podcast. <laughs> welcome. I'm Liani. I'm Crystal Dior. And welcome yes. to episode two. What well, episode two? Yeah. You just came from episode one and now you're at episode two. Yeah. Welcome. Let's hope. So this one, we're going to talk about 2023. Like, yes. I think just leave it, calling it 2023 is enough. That that year just needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. 2023 just, you know, we put, we're going to put respect on it. But we're, we're excited to talk to you about it. But we want to start with our one-liners because we're trying to be like, you know, the housewives, any, any location that you prefer. And they all have one-liners. So we want to pick ours. Yeah, reframe. We're not trying to be like the housewives. We just like the housewives. Okay, we like, like the... Well, we're trying to be like them with our one-liners. Oh, yes. So we're going to have a Who Said That segment. Mm-hmm. And it's we're going to say a quote. It doesn't have to be from the real housewives. But we have to do our one-liners first. That... Oh, wait, that's true. Okay, never mind. We have to do our one-liners. <laughs> she, she tried to skip over our one-liners. And I worked really hard... On my one-liner. Okay. And she's trying to skip my one-liner. Rewind. Rewind. Okay. So. Yes. One-liners. One-liners. Like the housewives. Like the housewives one-liners. How they come through when they say something silly. Yeah. Yes. So, do you want to go first? You go first. Okay. So, you ready? Yes. Here we All go. Right. So, I'm a mindset coach. Bringing the vibes and the thrive to your lives. You want to do that one more time? <laughs> Well, I was, I did it, but now she makes me feel like I do. So let me do, let me do it again. Okay. <sighs> yes. <laughs> okay. Your mindset coach, bringing the vibes and the thrive to your lives. All right. <laughs> what, what is the problem? I don't know the problem, but anyway, I I like my one liner. I don't okay. care what you guys say. Go ahead, Leandi. Okay. Um, so my one liner. It better be good after all this junk you have thought. My name is Liani. Where the only thing cleaner than my home is my business strategy. <laughs> okay. It was good. It was good. Should I do it again? I think you should. Okay. My name is Liani. Where the only thing cleaner than my home is my business strategy. What's the face she just gave y'all? Did y'all catch What's that? That's like you gotta. She was like staring gotta, into y'all's like, souls. You gotta like get in the scene, like. Oh, character. okay. That's well, I'll do gotta better. Get in the character. I'll do better next time. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do who said that? Who said that? So yes, so the word, this is where we give a quote, and it could be from uh, something funny, something inspiring, something whatever, mm-hmm. and we have to play a game where I describe this person. And then Crystal has to guess it, vice versa. Mm-hmm. So today is my turn. Mm-hmm. And so the, what were the words that I have are, I have standards I don't plan on lowering for anybody, including myself. Okay, give me hints. She is an actress. She is tall. Okay. She um, is the star of Euphoria. Zendaya. Yes, she said that. I like her. Yes. I really like her. I mm-hmm. like young, smart, intelligent, talented people. Yeah, she she's like the she gives like the I give zero F yeah. vibes. And that's like Because she kinda vibes. reminds me of what's the girl from like um Blackish, the daughter. Oh Anne Marseille Gronin. Martin. No, and Gronish. Oh, oh, Yara Shahidi. Yara. Mm-hmm. Zendaya and Yara kinda remind me of each other. Yeah. Like they're very controversial and mature in their thinking. They are mature. For mm-hmm. their age. Like, mm-hmm. they'll make a political statement in a minute. You're like, oh. Like, yeah. they're very, like, smart. Yara Shahidi gives me Lisa Bonet of our generation. Yeah. I mean, she. Mm-hmm. I think she just graduated from Harvard. If not. Possibly. If not this year, then she's graduating. But mm-hmm. she's, like, smart. And then she's Smarty also Smarty pants. a great actress. I just love it. I love yeah. it. The gener- Some people in the generation... After millennials, whatever what they call Z. Z. <laughs> Most of them, I have a bone to pick with. Most of them, but Why? they're like, I think they're like entitled. Oh, but that's another I subject know, for another day. First of all, okay, that's another conversation. I'm like, you I can't think, be calling Gen Z entitled when millennials we are the we hold the flag. Right, but we're hard workers, and I feel like the ones I know who are Gen Z. They want, like, they just think they're just going to, like, wake up tomorrow and be rich. And, like, they just have this you thing about them. You sound like a Gen X person talking about a millennial. So just. You know, you're probably right. And there's something about them. Maybe it's, 
Ugh. Oh, but the one, it. First the of all, Gen Z, I love y'all. Okay, I'm indifferent. Listen, I love Gen Z. I'm indifferent. <laughs> but the ones like Yara and Zendaya, I really like them. Okay. They make the rest of them bearable for me. All um, right. So, Stop takes. <laughs> I want to get all this hate mail from Gen Z in a minute. Uh, um, but we want to talk about 2023 recap. A yes, lot happened. A lot has happened. In 2023. Mm-hmm. But we all made it. Yes. If you're listening to this, you made it. Congratulations yes. to you. Mm-hmm. Um, Welcome to 2024. But yeah, a lot of stuff happened in like the entertainment world, the business world. Just a lot went on. Yes. So we want to just kind of like, you know, recap with y'all. Right. Let's give our opinions on these things. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's one that <laughs> I didn't tell you about, Liani. Okay. So I just thought about it today. Yeah. So this is not even on our uh, little let's cute, talk about it. cute cards. So this is for those who live in Houston or who have visited Houston. You have heard of the company or the restaurant Turkey Leg Cut. Yes. So recently it's been in the news that half of their employees who already weren't getting paid for the last couple of weeks got emails that they're being laid off. Okay. Because the two owners are going through a divorce. And they have stopped paying people because everything's just tied up. And as a business owner, of course, I mean, they're they're a married couple, but they're also business partners. So the first thing that came to my mind is like, you have to be like really smart about who you partner with because yes. their business is outside of this was very successful. It's like one of the places people come to Houston for or like right. one of the top, what do you do in Houston? Turkey Lake. Like, like that's like a, a landmark. Right. Yeah. So for them to go down, not just because the business wasn't successful, but just because there was some personal issues that they couldn't step aside from our marriage versus this business. Right. It's just unfortunate. I mean, there's a lot going on, but I don't know if you know this, but the own, the wife, she apparently everything was in her name. Wow. Because he has a criminal background. Oh, so he couldn't be on anything. Dang. So she kind of put him out, but you got all the tea. First I of all, Where's all this tea coming from? I got from? all the TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> but apparently he's abusive and that's what it was about. Oh my like, God. Yeah, okay. like verbally. But even like the, the staff said he was kind of crazy with them. Whoa. So yeah, she like put him out because everything is her, so in, everything's in her name. So I don't know if the business is going to keep going. I don't know if you guys come to Houston, there will be a turkey leg cup for you. I love those Hennessy wings. Those Hennessy I like um, the seafood. Leg hut. I, like, I don't even like turkey, but I like turkey leg hut. Like they're the wreck. Well, turkey legs is the best part of the entire That's true. turkey, period. But and when, that when they put that little henny sea sauce on it, it might not delightful. be no more. I mean, we'll see. We know divorces can be messy, and if he's crazy, then I'm sure he's not gonna take being put out allegedly crazy. We allegedly crazy. <laughs> he's not gonna take, you know, being put out of his business lightly. So <sighs> That's why you gotta you gotta have contracts, contracts, contracts. Yeah. Contract. And like know who you're working and with. And this is Texas. They should shouldn't the business be 50-50? If they started the business in Texas, I think it's 50-50. Well, li- probably, but on pa- paperwork wise, he's not on anything. So it's probably gonna be a court battle. Because I, I thought he was an owner. Well, cause there it's can can't they sell it? Somebody can come. It's very popular. Yeah. You can sell your recipes. I would buy it. You could I mean, you, somebody could take that and make it into And maybe, I hope amazing. that's a good business move. If I were another restaurant. Sell it. I would be like, let me, they're getting a divorce. Let me go in and uh, try First to all, offer them something. Right. What is it called on uh, the housing market? Oh, I was blanking on me. A short sale. Yeah. Have a short sale with this business. Yeah. That's what should happen. So we'll we'll keep y'all posted on that. But that's some new tea that I knew oh, you didn't know about. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because it just like, it just went down like last night on the top. There's always some, well, one thing for sure, if you want to know, well, if you want some drama, it related to business, Houston is the place to yeah. be. There'll be all types of stuff going on out here. Yeah. I'm like, one day so, something's open, the next thing it's on TikTok, it's all closed up. There's another restaurant, Black owned downtown. I think it's, oh, I can't think of the name, Phil and Derrick's. I think oh, it's Phil and Derrick's. Not sure. It's like a jazz restaurant. It's on like the list of places to go, but it was a husband and wife. They're together, but they went down for fraud. <gasps> but the restaurant's still open. What is this? All of this stuff. Remember yeah. Taste? I think Taste also had a situation. Yep. So, Y'all. lesson. And that Black entrepreneurs. So and it doesn't just happen to us, but we're talking to us right, right. now. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't try to, you know, do things quick to get, you know, like, don't fraud. Like, just do it right. Because then it's sustainable. 
then you can stand by your business. Then you will win in court of law. But when you're doing shady stuff, I think the dark always comes to light. So. Well, whatever is in the dark always comes to light. Yeah. Always. But always. Even also doing it the right way don't mean it's going to pan out either. So yeah. we're going to talk about strategy down the line and yeah. how to protect yourself from those either side of those yeah. things. Yeah. But mm-hmm. leading into that, Houston restaurants, Keith Lee. Yes. Let's talk about Keith now, Lee. Now, Keith Lee came to town and yep. he compared to these other people. Houston did quite We did all really right. good. We I did. Mean, because first of all, Houston food is the bomb. It is. And our customers, Period. people are nice here. People are nice. And so you get that Southern hospitality. Mm-hmm. You get that delicious food. Mm-hmm. And he had a good time. Warm and fuzzy feelings. He's yeah. been to some other places. Like Atlanta? Atlanta. Atlanta. I don't... How would you describe Atlanta? Because he's been to places. He's been to New York. He's mm-hmm. been to like other places where it's been like colder. Yeah. Uh, where he where it was like uh, not that like it wasn't as warm and fuzzy didn't seem mm-hmm. as enjoyable, but it's like Atlanta's in the south. But where was they, that southern they hospitality? Don't, I've, been, I've spent a lot of time in Atlanta in my former life. We won't talk about it, but I've spent some time there. <laughs> I'm gonna move right past that. Move, move right by it. <laughs> but I've gone to all the restaurants that he went to, really? and I had the same experience. Why do you think that is? It felt like they wanted you to be like they they treated like the customer service in the restaurants. They treat you like you should be honored that they're feeding you. You're lucky to be eating with That's us. the energy they have. <laughs> like, and that's just every, not even just restaurants. I remember getting, my, I got my nails done. You have to pay for your nails before they start your nails. What if I want to change something? You can't. You can't change something? Or you got to sell before they do what you're changing. Like, you have, so you don't get your nails done, you pay at the end. No. That feels Everything's so off putting. It's like, why do I feel like I'm over here doing like how, something shady? I just want to get my nails done. That's like, how they treat you. And like all the restaurants, like especially Candy Burris's um old lady gang. Mm-hmm. So I was excited to go, right? The person I was going with was like, I don't think you're gonna want to go. I'm like, no, I love, I wanna go to old lady gang. It was horrible. First of all, the food was basic. It wasn't even great. It was very salty. It was the food wasn't you even great. For people's next, it wasn't today. good. But then, like the the waitresses, they were just kind of rude. Like they took forever to bring. I remember our food was sitting in front of us for ten minutes before they brought us silverware. And I'm like, and we told them we don't have silverware. Oh, we'll be right back. I don't know. Like it just wasn't. I want to know what that is about black owned businesses, where it's kind of just like this blase type of yeah. service. I don't know. That's not every black owned business. It's not. It's some black owned businesses that that's part of the, I guess, the charm. Yeah. But I don't get it. No. And mind you, anything we're saying, if we're saying about black culture, because we're talking to, we're talking, this, this is who we're talking. We're talking to our people. Right. But other cultures do it too. But. Okay. I only know about mine. So I can speak. <laughs> like, I only talk about mine. I only can speak to my people, but there's nobody else talking about us. Okay. <laughs> but. Yeah, like, I feel like Atlanta, like, I never had great, I didn't have any good customer service. Like, I just didn't there. Mm-hmm. So when he said it, I was like, thank you, Keith Lee. Right. And then Keith, people be coming for Keith Lee. Like, and I was bold. who are you to have an opinion? For him Somebody to talk about who Atlanta? Tasted food. Basically, he's taking uh, Google reviews on tour. That's all it is. Yeah. Like, relax, people. Like, but I feel like he's like, no longer welcomed in Atlanta, and I kind of feel bad for him for that. Like, I, feel wouldn't, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, go back. back. <laughs> no. It's like, first of all, I love a little bouge. I love a little bouge. Yeah. But I don't like it. I don't like you to be stank. Yeah. You don't be bougie and stank. They are. They're both. <laughs> they're bo- they're, yeah. I feel like, like I'm about to get canceled, but it's true. I'm a, pol- I'm a polite bougie. I'm not a stank. And bougie. the thing is, they know they are. Like, I've talked to people <laughs> from there, and I'm like, why are y'all so rude? They just, they just think it's funny. I don't like it's not. It. That's like how New Yorkers think like being yeah. an asshole is like the way to be. Yeah, it's not. Like, but I'm too, I'm too smiley to be in New York. <laughs> I, I realized for the few times I've been in New York, you can't really talk to strangers. I don't want to talk to you. I wouldn't talk to anybody either. I've been trying to talk to people like, where do I go? Do... Right. Don't be lost in New York. They'd be looking at you like, Mm-mm. why are you talking to me? And I'm like, nope. okay. Nope. I'm a, I need a tour guide because I'm not. Yeah. I'm not playing Even around. like they're Uber drivers. Like I was in an Uber in New York and he was like. It was one of those Uber pools where he was picking up other people. Did you do the, that on purpose? Yeah, I was being cheap. Hell and then no. and the next <laughs> the next the next person he was supposed to pick up, I guess he was taking too long. So she's calling, you know, you can call. He's fighting with her, like cursing at her. She's cursing at him on speakerphone. And me and my friend were sitting in the back seat, like, maybe we shouldn't pick her up. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, like, was like, what are you talking about? This is how we talk. Like, we're wow. like, um, because they're like going at each other. And they get in and the car and probably just fine. So when he hung up with her, we and my friend were like, maybe you should cancel it. 
was like, he was like, no, she'll be fine. She's gonna, style. she's gonna wait. And he picked her up. She got in the car with the attitude. We're just like, <laughs> I, I think everybody got an attitude. I mean, the infrastructure has to it be was, annoying. I know yeah, it is. I've been around. I feel it. like they like it though. It's interesting. But back to Keith Lee. Yes. When he came here, okay. he liked us. What grade do you think we got? I think we got a good A minus. A minus. Okay. 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 I don't, I haven't heard any reviews better than us late like since have I don't I don't remember. I mean, we got he had know. a great I don't remember him complaining about anything. I have a complaint though. Oh yes, this is about the puttery. Yes, okay. don't say it like that. <laughs> Here we go. I have a problem. Okay, this is my See, this problem. Is, this is where Aaron Crystal's grievances. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to retitle this episode. Crystal got problems. Things that made Crystal, Crystal has mad complaints in twenty twenty three. Let That's me speak to is. the manager. That's what this is. <laughs> I feel like Keith Lee is like my spirit animal. Okay. But this is my problem. So the puttery. Okay. I don't have a problem with her. She's probably a very nice lady. Okay. Okay. But this is my problem with when you're asking for increase. All right. Okay. Because we all do it. We all pray for success. We pray for increase. Yes. We're like, Lord, give me more. Mm-hmm. Let my cup overflow. Expand my territory. Expand my territory. And then when it overflows, we'd be like, wait, you're doing too much. Right. Right. I ain't ready. Why are you like, doing like. Right. Like, oh, uh, uh, let, uh, let me uh, give it. Let me give it. Let's together. But like, <laughs> I've been praying for this for like 10 years. Right. And then it gets here. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Right. And I feel like that's what happened with puttery. Okay. Her business started in 2006. She's on a new business. Mm-hmm. 2006. She's been around this, 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 this roller go. A long time, a long time. Okay. She's been around this a long time. So she's on a new business. She had been asking Keith Lee to come. He said he she posted like 14 times. Okay. Asking him to come. Mm-hmm. She knows what happens when Keith Lee comes. Because we all know. Right. If Keith Lee gives you a good review, within an hour of him posting that, you're yeah, going to have a line down the street and around, around the, the corner, corner for weeks. Right. We know this. We and, all, and it will be sustained for some people. We all even know. If the line gets shorter. Yeah. Like now you're on the map. If you had five customers before, you will never have five customers again. Right. We know this. Mm-hmm. She knew this. She asked him to come 13 times because she had been praying for increase. Right. And I tried to go. It's been like a month since he was here. She hasn't opened until, well, first of all, in the first couple of weeks of her opening, she had to shut down unexpected a couple right. times She's which like, i got like, it oh, i'm like let just give me one second uh-huh. uh hold my beer let me go get my stuff together I'll be i right understood back. that <laughs> i was like she probably was like whoa let me i got that but now it's been about a month a month now it's been about a month and a half and i tried to go she doesn't open till noon she's closed it at four or five so she's okay. not open that many hours okay i went <laughs> i drove my little tail with my premium gas okay <laughs> 20 minute drive okay Two puttery around one, mm-hmm. one thirty. There was already a sign outside that she said she pretty much out of everything. Right. There was not. There wasn't even a line when I went. There was maybe like it's a small place. There's like two people inside, two or three people outside. It wasn't down. The, it was a small. Not a lot of people. You just opened at twelve. You're already out. Mm-hmm. I just feel like she wasn't prepared, and that and that's disappointing. So I'm the friend that likes to look at, let's look at all of the perspectives here. Okay. okay? I'm disappointed though. And sh- Crystal's disappointment mm-hmm. could be the cause of just some t- uh, some broken or some slow supply chain issues. I don't yes. know what it takes to make puttery things. I don't know what she got. It was banana pudding. I, go ahead. And it. <laughs> go ahead. Maybe there's a shortage on bulk banana pudding packages. <laughs> Okay, so I'm like, let's cut the girl some slack. She went, she did run out, of, run out of stuff. She needed to regroup. She was like, okay, I, I got what I asked for, but I didn't expect it to hit like this. Maybe I'm gonna get my stuff together. But then you realize things I can't get the things that I need in the time that I want. Right. Or she could have I I what this sounds like is some poor strategy for sure. Yes, and uh, possibly some delay in getting getting things done. Right. So. She so needed I'm not, to know. She probably. She, who knows if she has enough money to do this? I'm like, correct. So, not, so not only poor strategy, but you probably it don't have. If if it wasn't a supply chain issue, you probably don't have enough money mm-hmm. to. You weren't prepared. Get the amount you need. You weren't prepared for what you're praying for. And yes, in short, but that doesn't mean that it was like she like blew it off. 
No. It could have been some things that you were, you, there's always, there could be roadblocks and stuff. That's why I'm like, I just would like to give her a little bit of grace. Well, maybe you should branch out to more than just interior designing consulting because maybe she needs you. Oh, we got things to talk about. She might need you because yeah. I'm going to go about one more time, y'all. I'm going to go about one more time. <laughs> we should go together. We should. Let's go oh, together. We're we're and right, do a right, follow right, up. Right, right, right. Okay. We're going to go. <laughs> I'm going to give her about two more weeks and we're going to go. Okay. And if she don't got no gosh darn banana pudding, I'm I'm upset. Okay. Okay. She, well, we're gonna believe that she's not going to be running out of everything. Oh my goodness. And then if she is, we'll say what happened. Yeah. And we'll just try to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. But on the vein of partnerships. Okay. Chat GBT four. Yes. Okay. So the it, the interesting thing about this, first of all. A lot of stuff is going on, mm-hmm. and Chat GPT is or AI in general is like taking taking off by storm. Yeah, and this is a good time to be in the know of what mm-hmm. the AI girlies are doing. Yes, yes, you and need fellas. to know. You need to know. Need to be in. The if you're know. not, if you have no idea what we're talking about, Google it right now. Google it right after now. you subscribe. After- <laughs> then, go- <laughs> then Google it. Okay, you need to know. But continue. Yeah. So something to be on the lookout for. This was something interesting. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your intellectual property. Okay, mm-hmm. and not necessarily how what it what it means like to have something patented or something like that. But how valuable w- your creativity is mm-hmm. and your mind, and w- your mind and what your abilities are. So Sam Altman is the creator, uh, the CEO of ChatGPT, and for so- something happened where they let him go, mm-hmm. and it was so interesting because he's, wait, he's just a co-creator, right? He has a partner, uh, Elon Musk, I oh. believe, is is also a co-creator of ChatGPT. Okay, continue. So they he um what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Altman. Yeah, he got fired. I forgot what they fired him for, but it was so silly because they just did, they just launched Chat GPT 4. Mm-hmm. And it was like all these things you could do. You could create your own Chat GPTs mm-hmm. and it's all great. these things. It's really awesome. I love it. They fired him a couple, like shortly after, mm-hmm. after they he announced doing this partnership with Microsoft. And I'm like, this what reminds me of what they did with. Um, Steve Jobs. Yes. Where they let him go. They brought and him then, back. And they brought him on Real back. Humbling. And But this happened in like a week. Like, it was like, I want to know what was happening behind yeah. the scenes. What was the drama? Because let me tell you, there'd be drama in the, in the it'd software be like, space. It'd be like personal stuff, too. It don't even always be professional drama. Oh, I cannot stand with... Uh, when personal drama don't take, derail. I can't stand when drama messes stuff. with my coin. Yes, <laughs> you know, or or something productive or something. Yeah, like, like let's just make up so we can make money, or so we could make progress. Yeah, and money. Yeah, just kidding, guys. So, <laughs> like and money, Crystal. <laughs> I, I'm Crystal, and I want to be rich. Rich. <laughs> that's my. Ne- oh, that's my next week's uh, <laughs> one line. I'm like, gonna pull- I was like, my name is Crystal, and I'm born to be. Rich. I'm born to be rich. <laughs> But um, yeah, but so like they anyway, they hired him right back, and I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm sure there was some drama going on behind yeah. that. But it's like there was what was funny in between that is Chad GPT let him go. Microf- Microsoft said oh, we got that, and then, that's probably why they brought him back. Yes, and Chad GPT was like, no, no, my, my bad, my bad, my bad. That's why they brought him back. Yeah, I really feel like that was a big them knowing that he's about to take because you can't although they could take what he's already created they can't take what's in his mind right it's like so, okay like you what was the point of all of this and i'm like you should power be, right you gotta be careful how you play your games don't get rid of your prize pony yeah and <laughs> although we're not at the stage yet where we have boards right? and things mm-hmm. um you you have to think about that when you're thinking about your success and when you're growing correct because the people you have on your board one minute you're in control of your business and the next minute they vote you they vote out. you out so like, understanding what do you mean? that yeah. I put this with my bare hands yes understanding boards how they work understanding who you're putting on your board yes. understanding if you want to be public or not because once you go public don't be in a it's rush. pretty much not your business no more like that you're an employee right Pretty much, right. in which you can get fired. Mm-hmm. So just knowing that, like, once you have a board involved, it's now out of yes. your control. Don't be in a rush to have such an official business structure. Not saying don't get yourself incorporated and all that stuff, but be careful what you get because some of those, like an S corp or something like that, you have to have a president. You got to yeah, have you have to who you have to have people who are in decision makers. Yeah, and you don't want to if you want to be the main primary decision maker be careful how you structure your stuff yeah because they can just vote you out vote you out like you we all watch the tv shows about that like people rallying the board members to get what they want to stage a coup it's it's a whole thing (laughs) yeah which brings us to diddy 
Oh, nice. You segue, like that pivot? Friend. Look at me. I'm like a, I see I'm like you. a segment DJ. I see. <laughs> okay. But. Yes. Diddy. So you're like, how does board have to do with Diddy? So. Everything. Everything. His whole business is in shambles. Shambles. Over personal stuff. Over. Wow. Yeah. Over personal stuff. Right. And not, and I'm happy it's in, my personal opinion, I'm happy it's in shambles over personal stuff. But it makes you think about when she you're moving. It's people's throats, guys. <laughs> but, but my whole thing is like, if you're doing shady, it comes to the light. Okay. And then everything you've built will go down too. And I feel like that's yes. what's happening to Diddy. Like he was, I haven't heard, he's been the quietest I've ever seen that man. He always dancing on the, inter- on the internet. On the internet. He always got something <laughs> to say. Always got a word to He's been to so quiet. Yeah. And but this is the time when you got when you got guns blazing at you, you gotta you gotta get back. Yeah, assess what the field is like for yourself, yeah. and then create a plan to come out. Yeah, yeah. But what Cassie did well with her lawsuit, right? She was she didn't strategic. Just, she didn't just sue Diddy the person, Sean Combs. She sued Diddy's corporation, every business that man owns. She sued them too. So the board. Depending on how it's set up, because you can also can you. Put your businesses in trust. We'll have an episode about that yeah, as well. Yeah, to protect them. To protect each business yeah. from stuff like this. I yeah. can't imagine that he doesn't have something like that. I'm sure, but he also has an ego to where he might not. You'll be surprised how many oh, very- Like Prince. I was so surprised. No will. What is Aretha that? Aretha Franklin. No what will. What is that? So you'll be surprised how many very rich people do not have their businesses structured properly. I don't know how that Like happens. you'll be surprised how many businesses really just- just free for all like there's no structure there's no order it's just right so you'll be surprised so i don't know what did he does and does not have an order but i know cassie sued everything he got in order okay it's like i'm gonna take everything yeah the house the car the kids Earthing. and the dog i want it yeah all. and she actually <laughs> ended up because probably because she sued the boards or she sued the businesses the boards got to make a decision it wasn't just Diddy saying, oh, I'm not giving her. The board got to decide if they're going to settle with her or not. So she ended up getting way more than she was suing for. Because mm. um, the board's probably like, let's just, let's just. Right. Like, get up out of here. Let's we just cut this no off. Parts of yeah, this. yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you have to think about these things. Like, yes, you can be big tomorrow. You can go rich tomorrow. But are you ready to be rich tomorrow? Like, do you, you have things have... in order? Do you have your structure? Because just as quickly as you can rise, you can fall. Exactly. If things aren't in order, you, if your character is sketchy. Money should not be the driver of your success. No. Not at all. But when you're on your path to your success and whatever you're doing, yeah. be strategic, be thoughtful, be wise about it. Yeah. And um, learn. you learn as you go, but keep your eyes open. Yeah. You know and, and the therapist in me wants to also mention that Be sure that your character can withstand success. Yes. Because we've seen successful people emotionally crumble. We've seen rich people who we think have it all commit suicide. Mm -hmm. We've seen people have nervous breakdowns and end up in uh, insane asylums. We've Mm -hmm. seen it. Right. Um, And so your moral character, emotional character, your your self-care who you have around you and knowing that these people are are really wanting me to be good, not line their pockets. All that stuff is just as important as your LLC and your trust and all that being in order. If you're not good, it will still go down. So being mindful of that is so very important. So what would just while we're on it, uh, because that since it's so important, what is like one thing you would say, to somebody who is like you're they're in the they feeling like they're going to be successful in the thing that they're doing or they're transitioning into the most successful season of their life and it feel things feel a little unstable because it's so new mm-hmm. what type of advice would you give that yeah person? i think one thing is I, I i'm a huge proponent of practicing gratitude because mm-hmm. it keeps you humble yeah um so i think practicing gratitude making sure you don't start feeling yourself Mm-hmm. Making sure that you stay humble. And humble does not mean low self-esteem. Humble does not mean meek. Humble does not mean that you're talking bad about yourself. Humble just means you realize, although I'm successful, I'm still human. Right. And I have to make sure I'm taking care of my human side. And I think when people start feeling like they're untouchable and they start surrounding themselves with people who just tell them yes and whatever you want and you can have whatever you want, you start believing that and you think that you cannot fall. Right. And that's when people fall. So I think making sure you have people around you who honestly care for you who are not on your payroll right who you are not sustaining their livelihood right. who just care about you i think that's and important we're not frenemies we're not frenemies and having something that's grounding you at anchor 
figuring out what your anchor is. For me, it's gratitude. I'm always like, no matter how great things are, I'm like, I'm still grateful that I'm here. I am blessed to have this. Like, Mm -hmm. and keep reminding yourself that this is a blessing. It's not because I'm so great. It's because I am blessed. Even if it's your talent, you're blessed to have those talents. Even if it's your education, you're blessed to have that education. Like, just being mindful of that, I think it keeps you humble. Like, when I think about the celebrities who seem successful and stable, you can tell they have strong families. Like, the Rihannas. Right. Like, she still has the same best friend from when she was 12. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and you can tell she's a normal, like, she seems like a humble person. So, like, being mindful of that. And the people who are a little wild, like the Diddies, I'm like... <laughs> Where your people at? Where your people at? Like, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think that's that's important. Figure out what your anchor is. Finding you need an anchor. Yes. You need an anchor. And, and be sure you can... It doesn't need to be a person. It shouldn't be a person. Yeah. And if you're already struggling with emotional things, if you're struggling with depression, if you're struggling with low self-esteem, and you know, you know you. Right. Get that fixed before you put yourself in the limelight. Okay. Get work. Have a therapist. Have something going before you get yourself in the limelight. Because with depression, you think you have it under control until it's not. Right. Until you slip. Then when there's like some emotional catastrophe that happens that you didn't expect yeah. was coming. Yeah. Um, and how that could throw you off your off your balance mm-hmm. and needing to get some balance. Yeah. So that, finding that anchor. So if it's that gratitude time, yeah. if it's that, for me, it's getting into nature in mm. some way. And I'm like, especially like if it's on like in a mountain, it's in the beach. There's something about being in a, an open space. Where anchors it, you. It anchors you because it seems like it kind of deafens the noise. Yeah. Even if it's even if it's outside around people, being in certain places in nature can deafen the noise for me. I think it's really, really important that you have healthy coping skills. Right. Like you, we all, I know there's ways I deal with stress that are unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So if I'm stressed even more than I am now, I will jump to my unhealthy things. Right. So you have to make sure you have healthy things that you're already practicing. Mm-hmm. Because the thing about success, especially overnight success, it will hit you quick. And if you're not prepared, you don't always have time to prepare while you're in it. Right. Because once you get to that, once that spark hits, it's like, go, 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 right. go, go. And you feed off that energy and you're happy about that yep. success. And then you you can spiral into a place that you didn't see coming. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So speaking of success, look at look at me. <laughs> Let's talk about Beyonce Renaissance tour. <gasps> and now we have we have a lot because we just have the Grammys. So Beyonce success, right? Yes. I mean, I went to the concert. We went to the concert together. Yeah. We might insert a photo for y'all. We don't know if we know how to do that, but if we do, we'll insert one. <laughs> um, we, we went to Renaissance. We wore our silver. We had a good time. Mm-hmm. I think it was a successful tour for her. I think 100%. she made a lot of money. Yeah. I think the fashion industry was impacted. Everybody was buying silver. Okay. <laughs> right? Like, exactly. all that ever saw I know. Much silver in the Zara, store. H&M. Forever 21. Of, uh, Shein. Shein. They was racking it. Listen, raking it in. To, racking Timu. It Timu. Oh, I've never. I refuse. I know. I haven't yet, but I heard it's the bomb. I haven't. Bomb? I've heard, I Have heard it's great. Like two dollars stuff? I and haven't done I was, it yet. I'm about to tell you a joke that Robert said. I'm not going to say it. It's inappropriate. We'll talk about it later. Are you Sorry, ready? guys. <laughs> um, but I haven't yet. But I heard people who have who said it was legit. I don't know. How is it more legit than she in? It's just the cheaper. Same thing? It's just cheaper. Why would I want something cheaper than she It's the same in? stuff. <sighs> I haven't tried it. But okay. <laughs> people, I'm sure some people got their stuff from she in and okay. Timu. But she, like, she not only impacted every city she was in. They got more tourism. They got yeah. more everything. The fashion, the stores, the venues. Like, her tour impacted so many different business industries, which I think is really, really cool Right for her. Mm-hmm. She didn't win a Grammy for the best album. Now, that... Well, I am... We're... But I, she's been robbed too many times. And I'm like, at this point, if she gets it, I don't even... That won't even feel good. But this is my thing. She has like 30 something Grammys. That don't matter. So all I'm saying is if I'm going to cry over anyone not getting something, it's not going to be Beyonce. Like there's, I think don't there's you, other, no, she there's needs other to get artists. What she is owed. You were owed those Grammys. If you have that many Grammys, you should have album of the year, ma'am. But I agree. 100% but I think, for Lemonade and definitely, definitely for Renaissance. No, not Renaissance. I thought Lemonade was bomb. I didn't think Renaissance was that bomb. I thought there was like five songs out of the 16 that I liked. That's you. Half the, half the concert, I was just bopping. I didn't even know the songs. Stop talking. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> but Lemonade was amazing. 
Okay. I love either, lemonade. Either, either way, talking about the business of Grammys. Anyway, okay. So when you're in a situation, like, let's say this is like you want a promotion at work, right? Mm-hmm. And you have been doing all the things, you have all the accolades, but because there's some people who just feel like you're winning too much, it's like, I'm not going to give you that promotion. I'm doing my damn job. What do you mean I'm not going to get the promotion? And in her world, getting that number one, the album of the year, Mm -hmm. that's like the you made partner or whatever. I don't know. That's how I see it. Why is that particular category weigh so much? Because you had the best album of all of music that year. That's what that means. And it's like, oh, people are like, oh, forget about the Grammys. If I went to school and to act, to sing or whatever, if I've dedicated, I am a true artist in this situation. I'm a real professional. Mm -hmm. That is, that's what I want. If I'm like, if I'm in a space, like for instance, if I'm like, I'm a top designer, I would like to have an AD um, or an architectural digest interview or something like that like i want or whatever like and if i see that i have an opportunity to get it to get it but they're like they because they don't simply because these people that my peers don't like me for some for whatever reason i'm not going to get it it's like but i'm doing the work you know what i'm saying right i don't know i saw an interview with her dad and he was saying it's not necessarily the Grammys that has been blocking her. It's also her record label. Right. Because they have they have to decide, the people on their, on their label, who are they going to promote? Right. Who are they going to push? Mm-hmm. And so he was saying he thinks it's more of, from him being in those rooms, he was saying he thinks it's, it's not just the Grammys. He thinks it's more of a political thing. It's more of a, you know, who, who, who's a who's a who's. And I don't know what happens in the back the back rooms of these decision-making things. Um, but I like Beyonce. I enjoy her music. Am I a beehiver? No. But I'm not a huge fan of really anybody like that. But, and I'm not a huge fan of Taylor Swift either. Like, I think they gave it to her for a political reason. I mean, right now, she's like, the NFL is going up because she's dating the Kelsey man. There's a lot, the there's a lot of like, different elements where people make different decisions for bigger, longer things. So like I don't know I'm I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan but I know people who are obsessed with her right I like, don't know any of those obs- people I know a lot of people and young people <laughs> like I have some young cousins who are in their ni- their nineteen twenty okay. black girls from Compton mm-hmm. and they're obsessed with Taylor Swift I don't know I don't I don't they're like anymore. ridiculously obsessed with her when okay. she was here in concert I didn't even know she was here till I was downtown and I was like what is going on I saw like drones of people like in glitter and sequins cowboy thing I'm like where are they going mm-hmm. to like a lot of people. Um, so she has a bigger fan base than I know because I'm not in it. So I'm like, how in the world could she went over Beyonce? But I'm not in her target market. So right. I'm like, maybe she I don't, sold it, more. It, no, it don't have nothing to do with that. Because when Is it they, album sales? No. When they went for Renaissance, that lady who won album of the year, nobody knows who that woman is. Not, Wait, the, isn't that this year? Renaissance was this year? Last year's Grammys. Renaissance was on last year's Grammys? Yeah, she didn't, it wasn't submitted for this year's Grammys. It was oh. last year's Grammys. Oh, okay. So somebody won it that who nobody was. knows. There be people who nobody even knows them for real, but that, that small community of people who made that listen to their music compared to. So then maybe the it is a record label culture. thing. Maybe it, it was, is a record label it's thing. It's not just a record label thing. People, they The committee has come out and said, we didn't want to give it to her because she's won too much. That's not a reason not to reward somebody. They made that statement out loud? Yes. That's wild. I know they made that statement out loud. Yeah. And so it's like, there's no, you're, you're bringing again, personal stuff into a business thing. What I think it is, is that I don't know. I'm speculating, but just like we talked about networking, Mm -hmm. networking is important in certain spaces Mm -hmm. because it's like, it's about who you know and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe people don't behind the scenes probably don't like her that much maybe you don't mm. network with people as often i really don't know i mean not that it should matter but it does yeah it's it one does. of those things to where like i was talking to one of my friends about like a job interview because I, I do i do relatively well at job interviews i don't think i've ever interviewed and didn't get the job but i say it's not because i am the most like have all the skills but right. i can turn on my personality and people mm-hmm. like me mm-hmm. and i've usually gotten a job because they liked me mm-hmm. and although it shouldn't matter right I'm sure there's people who have better resumes than me, more degrees than me, more experience than me. 
I probably got jobs just because I interviewed really well and they liked me. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're right. Maybe they just don't. Beyonce isn't known for being super personable. (laughs) So maybe she just hasn't, you know, sucked up enough to enough people. Possibly. But also Candy Burris said something. She was like, there's a panel of your peers who vote for the things. Mm -hmm. And so there's once it gets to the the main group that votes, but they take the select the, the names that were selected from the larger voters bring it to the smaller group. And, and she's like, once it gets to that group, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of uh, black people on that group, mm-hmm. on that panel. So the, even though all the black people may vote for this one person, the rest of the group may not be feeling that person that much. So it's not a fair jury. I just feel like even that logic doesn't apply for a bunch of stuff. It doesn't apply for a bunch of categories, and it's like I just feel like there ain't. It's just like the wild, wild west. It feels like people just mm-hmm. do whatever they want to do in those yeah. spaces. I mean, but if we're being honest, although she hasn't won and Taylor won four, it's kind of like it's kind of not purposely waters down the people who win who we don't know who they are, but it kind of does. Like if you win and no one knows who you are, we're like right. So it's like although technically they won, it's like. Right, and it's, and it's also win. not, but it's also not like pop culture awards. It's like it what's, have the weight. what's the metric? It's like if it's not about the most popular, I guess it's just like who the academy, who the peers feel mm-hmm. like who like um, is important. That's but that's the same thing with like academia, peer reviewed things. Yeah, it's like they if your peers reject it, it doesn't matter if all these people who don't know nothing about this say I love it. Right. I mean, it, I mean it matters for I think that's what Beyonce focuses on is her fans mm-hmm. and like that her relationship with them. Yeah, but if you're in a space, uh, you want to be recognized by your peers because it's like we see each other. Yeah, like you know what the the level it takes to be this type of. And I think she still person. has that. Because at the end of the day, you can't tell me everyone don't respect Beyonce. When she walks into any room, people be excited. Like, grown people, people in this field for a long time. She yeah. gets respect when she walks into the room. I think it's I think it's it's both. I feel like I feel like maybe there's some things um she may get she may get respect. She may get respect for sure. She does. But I feel like behind the scenes in the industry, maybe she's not as liked as everybody outside yeah personality wise they might not like her Possibly. but no one can't say that she's not going to go down in history as one she's of the already greats. gone down in history so she's one of the great so yeah. grammy or not she she's one of the greats you know what mm-hmm. i mean and, and we know it like i don't know if prince or michael jackson ever got album of the year i have to look it up but whether they did or didn't yeah. i don't know and they're still known as the greats you know what i mean <laughs> right. so, so it's like i mean it matters but i hope she doesn't make it matter more than it should to her because I think everybody you can't change them. I think everybody else like, speaks for her. She has she hasn't spoken on it. Well, Beyonce don't speak on anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like she doesn't I don't say need to speak on anything, anything she about got people to anything. Say, so it's either Jay Z, Kanye, or Mama Mama Tina who's gonna tell us, <laughs> but or Salon sometimes in the elevator. But nonetheless, yes. moving on, <laughs> moving okay. on. Cat Williams interview. Yeah. So first of all, we just jumped all out of 2023. Now we're back in 2023. Well, I think they... F- oh, well, Beyonce's album was in 2023. That's true. And we started talking we about We gave you some current news. Right. <laughs> but Cat Williams probably filmed in 2023. Well, Cat... Well, right. But it definitely <laughs> blew up 2024. Right. Because it lit... That interview lit 2024 on fire. Lit it up. And I love yes. it. I love Cat Williams. I like authentic people. Yes. Who just we're still tell talking it, about it. Just tell it. I mm-hmm. like, like Monique just did one after him. Right. But it's not, it's not quite Kat. Well, it's not going to hit like that, even though she has some tea, some old tea. She has some old, her tea is real so old. old. She be dating like 19. If you started with 19, we don't want to, <laughs> don't pull them receipts. Well, that's what uh, Cat Williams is pulling some 1900s receipts. But his receipts... Th- Although his were old, the drama seemed new. Like the right, beef, it's like the drama had not been the discussed. Beef, the beef seemed new and it was ongoing. Right, exactly. <laughs> Other before him, like he, because he came to set the record straight. Correct. He let everybody else state the record, and he yeah. was like, "Well, I'm going to set it straight." And he's so like, although he's funny, he's very smart. He's I, I he's very all, I didn't know Cat Williams was that smart. He's intelligent. I was, he I didn't know that because. I'm still confused on some things, though. Mm-hmm. How he was like, I, he's been arrested, he's never been to prison or whatever, <laughs> and how like he's not, he ain't never did nothing crazy, but you did get on, uh, he- get put in a headlock by a child <laughs> on camera, <laughs> and <laughs> I 
forgot about that. And you punched somebody in Target. I remember I thought he was on drugs when that kid thing came out. But he's like, no. He's Did never, you see him punch somebody in Target and run off? <laughs> that happened. Because he's like so regular. Like and he's nobody, like a regular nobody dude. asked him any of those questions. <laughs> but what I can say business-wise, the man is smart. Oh, yeah, because he marketed that. That was the best. And Club Shay Shay about like, to be turned. like, let me go sit on your couch and do some free marketing. Pretty much. He pretty much, I mean, it was a win-win for him and, win, and win, Shannon win. Sharp. Yes, like it was a win for us, too. Yeah, but he did. <laughs> and he, he's dropping like a tour. He's going on tour yes. with Kevin Hart's first wife. wife. Yeah. Um, And he, that's coming. I think it's tickets now. So I'm like, he did this t- this this interview at the right time. Do you think he was, knew it was going to blow up like that? I, he, how could you know? I, I don't think, I don't he, think he knew probably the magnitude, mm-hmm. but I think he knew it would, it would push his, his tour. I think um, probably, he probably already knew. He was like, I know what I'm packing, but we was like, what? and we like him. Like, when he's pulling numbers like this. But we like him. Like he even said, like he, he's been on tour. He all, he's always touring. He is. One. He is. And he always has packed out shows right so he knows we like him right so he probably didn't know it would it would go well the thing i love about him though he's just like just his being is hilarious yeah. i love pe- when people are funny yeah. like that i love like that. he's like the epitome of like the winning outcast like although he's mm-hmm. out of like the the cool group like he's right. not he's yeah. not up there with the dl hughley's and the steve harvey like he's not with the Kevin Hart, I'm sure they ignore his calls. I'm sure, but <laughs> like, like, first of all, he's blocked. <laughs> he's blocked. I'm sure there's restraining orders, but we like the people we like. Cat, no yes. matter what comes out, he could punch Mother Teresa, and don't do we that. Like cat. cat, the people's comment. But we like Cat. Yes. It's just like hilarious. There's really nothing. I mean, they can like do. Cat. They respect him. It's like they wasn't. They was all. All the responses was like. um... I'm going to do me over here or whatever. They don't say anything directly. Ain't going to block my blessing type of stuff. <laughs> Too yeah, blessed that's to That's probably good to tell the truth. Type of, type of post. But it's like, no, y'all are probably real shit. It's because he's telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, he said he's never been sued for... Partial truth. It's partial, not, well, not his 100% version of the truth. truth. His right. version of the truth. Yeah. What he saw as truth. Yeah. He's not purposely lying. <laughs> we don't know that. We don't yeah. know that. <laughs> but he was saying, like, he's never been sued for slander he's never been given cease and desist on what he's saying mm-hmm. he's like and all these people got money if they could shut me up they would they would so he's he has to be telling some truth well, maybe I the think, i think uh kevin hart's got something on the line doesn't he not for cat oh but maybe not he I is suing his old assistant oh okay maybe and that other woman who will be interviewing people she's a little oh, messier yeah no that there yes but not for club shay shay Okay, well, so, no fights on the industry plan. No thing, fights on the industry. <laughs> okay, one more thing that I want to bring up that I didn't tell you about. Oh, okay. Surprises, surprises. Okay, so you know that com- the um, she's like a blogger, podcaster. She's a blonde girl. I can't think of her name right now. But she does like the whole like mean interview. Yes, Bobby. Somebody. Bobby. Mm-hmm. Yes. So her Who's, like, stealing. Who's basically biting Funny Marco. Funny Marco. So, But I didn't know about Funny Marco until her. And neither did I. Okay. But I'm also not in the comedy scene like that. Okay. So apparently people who are in the comedy scene have known about Funny Marco. Yeah. I knew about her. I thought she was funny. Like when she would blog about her baby and stuff like that. Now she divorced. Lord Jesus. She's divorced? Yeah. How old is she? 20 something. I heard she's out there being a little wild she's with her new like success. She's a baby. She's young. She got married and divorced since all this has happened? She's been divorced since all this happened. But she was married before she She was started. married before. She looked really young. Yeah, she is young. Mm-hmm. But so what do you do when, you know, someone steals your bit, someone steals your idea, someone steals your business concept and they go well, out Marshall's there and they not do the it. first person who to do it either. That's true. So I remember for do not know his forget his name. He was a dude from The Hangover. Uh, Alan from Hangover, oh, like mm-hmm. the goofy brother, basically. Mm-hmm. He had a show called Between Two Ferns. Okay. I for, I think it was on Netflix, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But it was funny. It was a dry interview, dry comedy interview as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but but the way she does it is very particular to how Funny Marco yeah. does it. And I thought that was interesting. Well, so the the interview that blew her up, the Drake interview. Okay. Did you hear about why it got pulled down? They got pulled down? Yes. Why? There's drama. What? Look at me with the tea. <laughs> Crystal with the T. And the thing is, Liana usually watches and knows more things than me. Yeah. So, so me knowing the T, I'm really excited about this. Right. And so we'll see the future episodes. We'll be competing on who got the best <laughs> Who tea. got the newest T? How fresh is your T? <laughs> um, 
So she the, the interview was like the one that really made people notice her. Right. So in the interview, he played a song. Okay. He pulled up a song because she said she didn't know the song. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who it was, but he pulled up a song. Mm-hmm. He did that on purpose. So after he pulled the song up, oh, interview goes live. He is a producer or he's a part of the song he pulled up. He sued them for using the song. Shut up. So he wanted her podcast to pay him for use of the song that he put. It wasn't his song. It was like someone. Uh, I don't it, like that. Was it like. You, did, she, did he set her up? Why would you set her up like that? So she when had to, did that happen? Like soon as she pulled it down within a week. I did not know It was that. only up a week. Why did you do that? That's sabotage. So he wanted her to pay for music rights. Why would you play the song on my podcast if you were going to come back and sue me? That yeah. So is a bleep move. Yeah. So that's that's some tea from 2023. Oh, look at me. Tea from 2023. Y'all, if I come out with a rap album, will you buy it? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Haters are going to hate. It's okay. To tell us Someone tell will truth. buy my song, even if it's just my mom. <laughs> yeah, your mom will buy it. <laughs> All right. So that is wrapping up the tea for 2023. Yes. A lot has happened on the drama end and on the business end. Yeah. We- it's all mixed in together. As we can see, personal and business likes to intermingle quite a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we want to close out with things we wish we knew. Yes. So I'll go first. I wish I knew I didn't have to have it all together. But I wish pe- more people had it all together. <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Because um, your your standards are clearly pretty high. <laughs> um, okay. So my theme for this season is probably going to be the same over and over again. But slow and steady wins the race. Don't rush building your business. Yeah. So that's all we have for you. Please tune in next week. We do weekly episodes. Mm -hmm. Follow us on IG, Giggles and Goals on YouTube. Um, Subscribe to us now, Giggles and Goals on all social medias, Giggles and Goals. You can find our individual brands there as well on our Instagram. Have a great week, y'all. Talk to you next week. Bye.